Dun, dun, bum. Good morning. Oof, that's a bad lineup though. Hello. Good morning. There we go. Still getting the hang of lining this up properly every time. Sometimes I'll show you guys how my setup is. Time more. There we go. The new camera is, uh, my new phone's camera is in a slightly different position, so it doesn't work out always, all the time. Hey, good morning, artists. Happy Monday. Uh, may the 4th be with you. It is Star Wars Day. Got my shirt on, got my little star necklace. Rocking it out. Um, hope you guys had a great weekend. It was super nice weather, and I hope you got a chance to go outside and have some fun. Um, definitely enjoyed the warmth while we had it, and now we're back to 50s for a while, but we're going to keep making it work, yeah? Um, at least it's not raining today. So, we got a new project starting today. We are doing some line paper art. This was something I kind of found perusing the internet a little bit when I was hunting up some ideas for... Uh, quick projects that we would be able to do in class and I found this really cool just kind of fun little um, style to do with lined paper so this is something that I think you guys are really going to enjoy doing um, in just and you can do it in notebooks and everything so I have a feeling this is going to become the new thing for when you're sitting in class and maybe a little bit bored and you need to do something to kind of keep your mind on track just doodling on the side uh, before I show you what we're doing though and we get started together, I do want to give you um, a quick little heads up. I know I've said this before, I'm going to keep repeating it. Please do not go on Instagram or go online anywhere and try to find pictures related to our assignments and turn them in pretending to be yours. Please do not steal someone else's picture and try to turn it in pretending that it is yours. I know we've got a lot going on. I know it can be stressful to try to get some of this, all this work done that you are doing for my class and all your other classes, but still, please do your own work, turn in your own work. If you need more time, you can have more time, whatever you need to do. If you're struggling, that's okay. Ask me for help. I will do my best to help you. Send me your in-process pictures. I will give you some tips on what you can do. Other than that, though, Let's keep going. Um, we're actually welcoming a new group of fifth graders in, so welcome new fifth grade. Your rotation just changed. And let's get started on our new project. Let me swing you around so you can kind of see what we're doing. So, this were some pictures that I'd already found online, so you can kind of get an idea of what our inspiration was. And the idea is that you use the lines on the paper like your regular lined paper, and kind of draw in between them to make it look like something is going behind and then coming up or curling over or sticking out. So I thought that octopus was super cool. Um, my picture cut off a little bit, but you can kind of get the right idea. Like a cat, almost like he's climbing up through the blinds and then his head's poking out. So you can still see where the lined paper kind of shows through a little bit, but it's a little bit faded. You still can see the, uh, the creature. And then these I thought were just fun. Some little cartoon creatures, same kind of idea. So by skipping through or erasing part of your drawing, you can have the rest of it look like it's poking out or put something in the front too to make it look like it's showing up. Oh, good morning, Sharon. You've seen these? Yeah, I think they're super cute. And it was just very inspiring. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna go with that today. So I've got some lined paper with me. If you do not have lined paper, if all you have is just regular plain paper, um, you can easily draw some lines. Um, a ruler would be best, but if you don't have a ruler, you can just take any piece of paper, fold it in half and use the edge as a straight line. And you can draw your own lines on your paper. But if you have lined paper, if you have notebook paper, I'd recommend that. I'm actually going to turn mine because I had a cool little thought for the one that I wanted to do. Now, 
This is not a follow along. You do not have to do the exact same drawing that I am doing. Um, your assignment is to do a cool little drawing that kind of skips through the lines. I'm going to show you how uh, an easy way to do that, um, but you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. So what I would recommend, and this is going to be some really good practice, the skill that we're really focusing on in this is learning how to draw lightly. So you're going to practice instead of always holding your pencil close to the tip, um, and we've talked about this before with doing shading, is to try and hold your pencil a little bit further back so that you can draw lightly. Um, I'm going to be doing a little character, and I'm going to start by just really lightly sketching it out. So it's probably going to be almost too light for you guys to see, so I'll have to go a little darker, but that's all right. So seeing all these little uh, other artworks of people um, kind of peering through or climbing up as if it was a ladder, that kind of inspired me to this idea of, well, what if this was somebody who was um, instead kind of stuck inside of some bars? Which I think I made that a little bigger than I wanted to. Come closer. There we go. I want to make it look like this person is just reaching out. They are stuck inside. But I want it to be not just be a person. I'm going to actually turn this into a little fairy creature. A little fairy creature that's trapped. So I'm doing the whole thing really lightly first, just to get the whole shape of everything. And then I'll end up going back and doing a little bit of erasing. So I'm going to make it look like she's hovering. I wanted to put on Star Wars music for you guys today, but I'm pretty positive that... <laughs> That's a level of copyrighted music that I could not get away with on YouTube. So <laughs> we're just going to let that be for now. All right. So I want it to look like she's actually reaching out. So I'm going to do this little foreshortening trick. Foreshortening, just to give you an idea. Where's my, where's my scrap paper? Foreshortening. It's kind of like this. If I was drawing somebody and they were reaching out to the side, you would see the whole length of their arm. Okay? If you had somebody who was reaching toward you as the viewer, it means that you would draw the thing that's reaching out much larger than the rest of it. So where this hand is off to the side, I'm reaching, I want whatever that is. This hand is coming towards you. So you have to draw it larger than you would expect. So I've got it larger than the head. And you don't really see much of the arm. So you're shortening the length of something to make it look like it's getting closer to you. It's something tough to try and get used to. Um, it definitely takes some practice and and working with like perspective and such. Um, but I've found it to be really cool when it works. So I want to make it look like she is reaching way out. She's actually going to be grab, trying to grab at something that's over here. So 
Sorry, I'm drawing it way off the side. Apologies. Just a quick sketch of where that's going to be. And we'll get into the details of that in a moment. So now that I'm getting part of this figured out, I have to decide where the openings are going to be. So I want it to look like her arm right here is coming through an opening, which means that this and this are gonna become where the bars are. So if this part isn't open, this part is going to be closed. So I'm going to sketch in the rest of her wings here. So I know that this is going to become a bar. This is going to become a bar. This is going to become a bar. What I'm trying to create is figure out where the next bar will be. Boom, 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 boom. So that I can put her other hand like it's holding on to this bar. Really quick, drawing something to look like it's holding on to something. You're going to have the thumb on one side, and that's going to start off like a little triangle shape, and then round out that side. Fingers on the other side. If you start with like the pinky, you're going to go up and over. And then curve back up toward just to barely cross over that the line of whatever it is that's being held and then each finger after that up and around up and around up and around this works for bars this works for swords this works for axes this works for just about anything trees all of that Throw in fingernails if you like. That thumb is way too low now though. Thumb should be around the middle. There it goes. Much better. It should make almost like a circular shape by the time you're done. All right. So since this is going to become a bar, I'm even gonna sketch in a little bit the rest of the hand, just so I know where everything's gonna be. And I'm even gonna straighten out the thumb a little bit. I don't want it to be too bent. There we go. And that's gonna come down to her arm. So we can have her arm meet up just like that. Let me give her this cool little kind of swallow tailed butterfly wing here. Okay. So once you got your sketch pretty much out, um, anything that's going to be in the front you may want to start with just to make it a little easier. Um, and especially with a pencil drawing, I recommend if you're right-handed, you start on the left side and then kind of work your way across. Um, because what'll happen if you start on, on your right side and move toward the left, your hand is gonna be smearing across all of your work. So once you get the sketch on there, it's pretty easy to then go in and start working on the rest of it. So I want to create a key. She is locked up and she is trying to reach for the key. Made that part a little less centered. There we go. I'm going to end up shading in the key pretty dark so my sketching is a little bit darker than I normally go. Actually, 
see. At an angle, straight up. Put a little ring on there, make it look like it's got a key ring. So I'm gonna encourage you guys, if you want to color this, you can, um, but it's not a requirement. And in fact, it, it can kind of be fun to just use your pencil on this one. Um, kind of think of it as <laughs> if you were in class and you were listening to a teacher lecture and you were doing a doodle as you were listening. This was something I did a lot. Um, it was a habit I started to pick up in high school and then got really good at by the time I got to college. The trick is you want to pick something that you can do without really having to think about it so that you can still pay attention to the, uh, the teacher's lecture. So I'm always doing art, especially if I'm in like a staff meeting or the dreaded professional development, which is pretty much classes for teachers. And it's hard for me to sit and just stare at a person while they are talking. So I will usually have some kind of a notebook or a sketchbook. Um, if I'm at school, I'll usually have my apron on, so I've got my my no-no notepad in my pocket. It helps me to focus. Kind of the same way how if you're doing some kind of work and you put on music, it's just having that little extra thing to kind of help your mind. You just don't want to do something that's going to take your too much attention away. It's kind of why, like, it's okay to listen to music in the car uh, and sing along with stuff, but it is not okay to have a video going to, like, try and have a movie playing in the background while you're in the car. That's, that's definitely not safe. Um, because then you are listening and watching, and you are not watching the road like you should be. None of you are driving yet, I hope. You shouldn't be. <laughs> Students, anyway. Anyone else popping in? But you should know that anyway. But yeah, so I got good at doing doodles in my class. And it helped me with paying attention. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Nice big key. So now we're going to get into our character. She is a trapped fairy caught by some kind of sorcerer or wizard who keeps them as a collection. Her and other little fairy types, other little mythical creatures. And she's hoping that if she can just reach the key, And they'll be able to open not only her cage, but hopefully help out all the other little critters that are trapped. So 
So even if you're not doing any kind of um, coloring, you're still going to want to do a little bit of shading. Um, with the exception maybe of just this one where they don't do any shading. They do have these really thick lines that they add. You can see where they uh, darkened the lines from the paper to make them stand out more. Um, and on these, the color being right along the lines shows it off well. Um, but these ones that are just black and white, having that shading really helps to make the difference between the lines stand out, especially on this little kitty. The shading really helps to define uh, where you're seeing through and where you've got something in the way. So whether you are coloring or shading, um, choose one. Don't just leave the lines to themselves. So I'm gonna do a little bit of shading on her hand here. I've got some paper towel handy. Let's get a little square of that going. A lot of the times, if I'm in like a meeting situation, I will do my doodles um, in pen because I can't blend them. Otherwise, I'd end up having really dirty hands and if something happens and I have to help pass out papers or do something like that um, I can't have a totally filthy hand so most of my classroom doodles I ended up doing just in pen I still have a few from college too I was really into um, the show Dragon Ball Z at the time and I had one year where my classes were a little bit later, um, so I was actually able to stay home and watch Dragon Ball when it came on at like 7.30 or something like that in the morning. And then I would go to my class and I would end up doodling in the margins what had happened that day <laughs> on Dragon Ball. All right, so that's an opening, so that means this is a bar. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of darkness to these lines. So I know the face is going to be right in here, but we're not going to see much of it because of this Barbie in the way. So we are going to see one eye. I'm going to try to make it look like she's straining a little bit. I'm not going to see a nose, but we'll see a little bit of the mouth. And same thing, I'm going to try to make it look like... Ugh, like I'm reaching, I'm trying really hard to get to this. And then I'm going to give her a really long elf ear so that I make sure it shows up. So we're going to see some of her hair there. That's another bar. Give her a, a little, almost like a Tinkerbell kind of top. And then I'm going to sketch out a little kind of leafy skirt. Again, really lightly, because I know I'm going to have to erase parts of it. Very Tinkerbell. Okay. I'm 
I'm gonna shade in parts of our wing where I know the bar is covering. I'm gonna darken that a little bit. So definitely make sure you have a good eraser for this one, guys. shading in the face. So I'm curious if any of my fellow nerds are going to be doing anything Star Wars related today. I actually, controversial as it is, I got the uh, the last movie recently. I was actually sitting on my porch this morning. Um, Rise of Skywalker. Probably watch it a little later today. We'll see. Maybe we'll binge some other Star Wars. So I'm creating some little circles on here because I want to add a little bit of texture to her outfit. So what I do is I create the circles and then I'll go over and blend a little bit. So it shades the whole thing in but then it also has that little bit of that cool texture with it. And then I can use this to add some more shading on her skin. You hear that boom? That sounds like a dog jumping off a couch. <laughs> the boys have been really good lately. Nothing too crazy. We haven't seen, we've seen a lot of critters out and about, but um, so far no more adventures like we had before spring break. If you were with us then, um, at one point we had a deer visit in our backyard. Um, we had a wild turkey that showed up. That was pretty crazy. We had um, a snake. Which luckily my sister managed to keep the boys away from until, uh, <laughs> until it was able to go on its way. So we got her knee showing here, a little shading. Probably should have a ruler for parts of this. Let me see, do I have a little guy over here? Yeah. This is a very old, old ruler. You can see these vintage stickers on it. to give a more defined line. We're going to keep the leaves a little light. But what we'll do, we'll add 
It's a little leaf veins to it. Just so it doesn't look too plain. Probably could just go through the center part here. And just do all these lines really dark. Just to make it a little easier. Okay. So I've got her shoulder and the rest of her outfit, her dress here. Let's go through and start adding all these tiny circles because that was a brilliant idea to add a ton of tiny detail. But you know, I, as, as intimidating, as scary as it can be to look at something that has a bunch of little details to it, it's not as difficult to do as you might think. It just takes time. So doing something like this, where all you're doing is drawing a bunch of really tiny circles really close together, it's not that difficult. But if you have the time and the patience to do it, you end up creating this really nice look. Now we've got more leaf and part of her knee there. So that needs a little skin shading. the leaf detail nice looking pretty cool guys do a little quick shading up on this wing here all right it's almost like going row by row at this point So like here's the next part of the wing and the last part of that wing. We've got her arm, the rest of her dress, leading into some more of her skirt. You see more of her leg down here. So that's going to mean more tiny circles. And more leaf detail. So again, see how I'm just adding in this quick little stripe? And it's just giving you that extra little detail to something. I'm gonna start the blending in her outfit. 
because that's the darkest part. Bring that a little bit into her skin, especially and a little shadow happening underneath the edge of her skirt here. So you can see that I'm blending, I'm kind of going over the lines a little bit. And that's just because I want it to feel like, I don't want to make it look like the shadow has, the shading has just stopped abruptly. But by going past it and then coming back and erasing, it kind of just helps to keep things smooth. Shading on this wing. There we go. All right. Next section. careful in my line here because I don't want to cut through the fingers too much. So we've got more wing at the top and the hand. And we've got more leafy skirt. And a hint of her leg. So some light shading first on the wing. Leaf. And little shadows on her leg here. I'm going to add it up into the arm. All right. So now I'll go back and go to the bar and clean that up. You probably could go through and draw the whole thing with the shading and then go back and clean up. But I kind of like being able to see how the whole thing is looking as I'm going. Next row. Again, being careful of the fingers. Let's even do the next one while we're here. Okay. Alright, so some more wing. It's pretty much all wing all down the side here. I'm going to do a little cleaning up inside these fingers though. Bottom of the wing starts. Let me see. Bottom of her foot. Just a bit. All right. 
pro tip. I want to do shading. I don't want to scribble on here. So I'm going to put a little scribble on my paper, my scrap paper. Pick a little bit of it up. It puts a little more pencil in. A little more graphite onto it. All right. Not the foot to be too dark there. Okay. Now up here where I've got the hand. There's of course the fingers, but I want to add a little bit of a shadow underneath the fingers on the bar. And then the rest of it can be nice and clean. Clean, 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 all the way down. All right, the remainder of this is pretty much all just going to be dealing with the wing. So I'm going to draw in the lines. At least where they relate with the wing itself. Okay. Not there. Careful. <laughs> Darken a line, skip a line. Darken a line, skip a line. So skip, 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 skip. Into here. Come around back, skip, skip, skip. Little tail end. Bring it back. All right, so what I'm gonna do for this, because it's pretty much just gonna be all shading, I'm gonna mostly focus on the part where the wing is gonna show up, but I'm not worried at all about it crossing the lines. up around the edges of it a little bit like that and like this and now we clean up the line back up a little bit so you can see the whole thing a bit better little trapped fairy in a cage oh no <laughs> thanks Bob and works I'm glad you like it No, we still got some more time. What can we add to this? Hmm. I wonder if I could try and sneak in the uh draw a couple lines here real quick. Just to darken these up. 
That's a bar. What about... Maybe right around here, we've actually got do one more set. We're doing this on the fly, guys. We're just we're just gonna make something up, making stuff up. Come down closer. Join me. All right. So we're gonna turn this part into. A door. This is the door to the fairy cage. And what happens on that door? There is a hinge, a little hinge here. Which holds Flap of metal, a little piece of metal here. Which has a little loop of metal that's attached to the cage itself. And hanging off of that bit of metal. Let's make it a little bigger, huh? Is a padlock. That's what she needs the key for. So we're going to add a little hint of shading on the door just so the door stands out a bit. Little do 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 to show the interlocking spots for the hinge. This is where it's attached. So again, the little trick of adding little circles. Not as many as I did on the dress, but that's where they attach to the hinge. That goes to this metal that we will also shade in. Try to make that a little bit round, so we'll do a little bit of shading on that. Try to make it look rounded. Same on our lock. A little darker here and here. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with for your idea. Um, feel free to be inspired by other artwork, mine or some of the ones that I showed you, if you liked that octopus or that cat. Um, but again, just keep in mind, it's very important, do not try to take somebody else's work off the internet and turn it in as if it's yours. I am not foolish. It is pretty easy to tell the difference between someone's professional work that they have professionally scanned and t or taken pictures of versus my middle school students at their homes 
with their phone cameras. It's also pretty easy for me to search images. You may not know this, but you can put pictures into Google and ask Google to see if it can find any pictures that look the same. So if you try to turn in a picture that is not yours, it's pretty easy for me to search for it and find where it came from. Just remember, I want to see your work. I'm not grading you guys on like perfection or anything like that. I want to see what you can do. That's true now with us being online and everything. And that's true in my classroom. Would never let you bring in like a poster from your house and say, this is mine. I did it. It doesn't work that way. You got to do your own work. I wouldn't let you have your classmate do the work for you. And you try to turn it and say, well, they helped me, but it's mine. Oh, no, they did it for you. It is not yours. That's pretty cool. What do you think about that? Look at that. I'm happy with that. Back it up again. Let's take another look. Camera, why are you all twisted? Don't get it twisted. Very nice. Let's add a little, little detail since we've got this line here on the paper anyway. Let's make that a part of this. Like a little ledge in the cage here, maybe. A way to hold the bars together. There it is. All right, um, we're gonna add to the bottom here. Da da, sign your work. Um, just as a heads up, if I start seeing um, more people turning in not their pictures, um, we may have to create the rule of you have to sign your name onto your paper to prove that it's yours. So may as well start practicing that. You should sign your work anyway. Normally in class, I like you to put your name on the back because I know that some people get embarrassed when I put things on display and their name is right on it. But maybe we will change that. I also want you to be proud of your work. Mary Kitten Ruler. There, making the door look even more like a door. All right, guys, there's mine. We're done a little bit early, but I think that's okay. Let me pop up these pictures again. So have some fun with this. Um, animals is kind of a fun choice, but pick something that you're comfortable doing. So if, if you want to draw um, one of your favorite cartoon characters as a part of this, uh, feel free to, please do. Um, if you want to do your lines going sideways, that is fine. If you want to tip them upwards like this, that is also fine. Um, I'll probably put these other pictures up online as well as uh, examples of what other people have done as well as put mine up there for you guys to see. Okay. Let me spin you back around here so we can say bye-bye. Whoosh. Have a good look at that floor. <laughs> Hey, 
There we go. Okay, so last reminders. Projects are due on Friday. I post them on Monday so you can have time to work on it, but if you wanna take your time, if you wanna wait till Friday to do it, please don't feel that there is a rush. If you need extra time, um, it helps to let me know, but if you need to turn things in after Friday, I'm still accepting them. So please don't wait to the very last minute and then feel like you have to rush. I know there's some people who have been um, waiting for like weekends and stuff to do some of this work. I understand there's no penalty for it being late, but if you wait too long to do it, you're just gonna start piling up all your work one after the other, and then you've got all of it to do at once. So try to keep up as much as you can. Um, use the time you have during the week when you have a, a spare moment that you can work on this if you need to. Um, yeah, feel, feel, I mean, you don't have to do it all in one sitting either. So if you have half an hour before something's going on, sit down and work on it a little bit. You know, you can space it out that way as well. That's why I wanna put these up so early. So I know it's sometimes confusing with the schedule that the school put out, but even with that, try your best to get done your work when you when you are able to. You know, obviously do your work for your classes and do your work for me when you get the chance. Why is the focus freaking out? Jeez, I'm sorry about that, guys. It's probably driving you crazy. Um, I will see you tomorrow. We are probably going to either be doing rocks or possibly working on some drawing. We'll, we'll see what the mood is like and go from there. Um, and if you guys have anything that you would in particular like to see, um, examples of some kind of a style of drawing or a technique that you want to learn but um, is not necessarily something we're doing for this class. Like, if you want to see me paint something, let me know. I can do that. Um, and we're not going to be doing a painting assignment because not everybody has paint at home, unfortunately. But um, we'll have some fun. So work hard. Let me know if you have any questions or if you get stuck on anything. And I will see you guys tomorrow for whatever stream we end up doing. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay home when you can. Wash your hands, cover your mouth, all that stuff. Okay. Have a great day, guys.